three, two, one. Hey, it's Wild Josh from Geek Center, and I'm joined by Chase, Joa, and Kyle. And tonight we're going to live stream about The Mandalorian Chapter 14, which is Season 2, Episode 6, also titled The Tragedy. Now, let's get geeky. So, I think, Chase, we can start by you just pulling up the slide number one. All right. Because this kind of started the whole thing off. Which one is that again? I'd label the slide number one. Yeah, but I didn't actually look at that when I put them into... Is it the Knee Rockets? No, sorry. It's the the title screen. Hmm. What? The title? Tra- chapter 14, The Tragedy. <laughs> no? Was that not in there? Okay. We don't need actually need it. It was just for dramatic effect. Anyways. <laughs> so... Um, no drama what did here. You, what did you guys think when... What were your first impressions when we saw that chapter 14, the tragedy, like that title of this episode? I all what of a sudden knew person? that uh, Ezra and I were wrong. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is... Mean? Well, Ezra and I had said in the last time that we weren't getting Tython or Moff film. Gideon. We thought this is a filler episode. And as soon as it says the tragedy, I'm like, oh, there's way more story here than they're letting on. And then to top us off less. with being wrong on Tython and Moff Gideon, they also threw Boba Fett in our faces, and I'm just like, all right, whatever, shut you up, were wrong Jonas. On so many levels. Yeah. Can I just say, <laughs> whatever? I it? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, we would see all of it, like within the last three episodes of the season. I knew Tython and mm-hmm. Moff Gideon and Boba Fett. I guess Boba Fett, that episode, like in episode 14 or chapter 14. I didn't think we'd see Tython or Moff Gideon, though. I just knew we wouldn't have to wait until next season. Yeah. yeah. I, I was so glad to be right. I was thinking <laughs> that there was one story arc that would have to wait until next season. I had figured we were entirely done with Boba Fett. I figured he was a one-episode cameo for, like, four seconds, and he was out of there. But... Nope. I think what you can expect is the unexpected. Because, yeah, yeah, we got it all. That episode has so much stuff in it. Only and it was 30 only 34 minutes. minutes long. It was 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. It, it like, feels like it was much longer, you know? Yeah. And that, that's a good thing, mm-hmm. you know? Not that it took an eternity, but, mm-hmm. like, it was it was jam-packed, you know? Yeah. There wasn't a dull moment the entire time. Yeah. When I saw the title, The Trap, tragedy i was instantly like like almost like that heart sinking feeling where you're like what what's gonna happen like Mm -hmm. you know that they're not afraid to really kill off people because they killed off quill and they killed off ig11 like who are they gonna what what's the tragedy who's gonna go um what's gonna blow up no yeah i didn't expect that hurts that (laughs) it's too soon (laughs) he just got it back in pristine order i don't think they're fixing it this time i don't know (laughs) There's not much left. But uh, it's a good thing Boba got his armor out of it when he did. It's true. <laughs> oh, the armor would have been fine. It's best guy. Anyway. That's true. It would have just been the armor, though. Like, everything fabric attached to it would have been gone. Any kind of, like, tubing and hoses would have been gone. But it would have been repairable. The missiles might have blown up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I... What should we talk about first, then? Here? Like, I, we I guess let's start or? with, like, yeah. Let's start with Tython. Just not what I was expecting. What, did you, what were your thoughts on Tython? I was expecting more, more ruins. Yeah, I wasn't just expecting Stonehenge. That's that was yeah, all of Tython that we got. I was expecting to see like the ruins of the Jedi Temple from like the Star Wars: The Old Republic game, or at least yeah. something that alludes to that. But we just got Stonehenge on top of a hill, and a giant rock that has engraving on the side of it. So yeah. I will say that I thought I was a little disappointed with that. Just I wanted to see more of Tython, mm-hmm. and what we got was just, uh, yeah, not much. Just one ruin, and it wasn't even, it was like a shrine. So I thought, like, in the distance, you would see ruins of, like, mm-hmm. like you said, Chase, the temple or something like that, but we didn't get any of that. But it seemed like they took this, and we talked about this on the Discord a little bit. That they were not in the volume. I didn't get the feeling that they were in the volume for this. I don't know if you guys did. 
but to me it seemed like they were on location like filming outside it had I, a I different think they were it had a different feel to me mm-hmm. they they were actually um apparently uh another uh, the, the sequel to Gene's guy there was a helicopter in the background of this episode <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah oh, man. Uh, some somebody uh, i saw um made like an article uh that's no moon <laughs> <laughs> Well, that'll be gone, probably. Oh, oh yeah. It'll, it'll be I'm just shocked that they're yeah. letting those things get through to post anyway. Yeah. Oh, well, can't catch everything. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. So, uh, the internet yeah. seems to. <laughs> oh, yeah, they will catch everything. And More staff. Anything. <laughs> yeah. But um, this this episode, so was it was actually directed by we didn't know we looked at last week right to try to figure out who was directing it to see if we could get any hints and we didn't know Mm -hmm. because they didn't put it out it was robert rodriguez so he's got kind of an interesting film history he did like the spy kids movies which are probably like not what you would think of when he like he's typically does more like uh dark stuff like he did the sin city movie um so yeah he's got like a pretty interesting film history for for directing and stuff like the dust till dawn stuff he did some of that and yeah so anyways it was definitely a different like the feel was a little different in some of the shots i felt like Mm -hmm. but i didn't mind it and then watching it again because i've watched it twice now you kind of like forget that it's different i did anyways Mm. um so it was. It had some good comedy in it too, like when he puts it, yeah. the baby down and he's like, "It, it felt on, at least to me like... reminiscent of um, Taika Waititi's episode from the first season." It mm. felt like that similar little, strand little of humor. humor. Yeah. 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 I could see that. Yeah. Um, I really liked. Um... Just the the entire setup with Baby Yoda there was like the child. It was very, uh, you're right, Grogu. Grogu. Until I'm proven otherwise, that name is restricted. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Grogu. The whole <clears throat> the whole setup with with Grogu on the the stone, just like you said, Ahsoka said. The nice lady said that all I had to do was put you down here and you'd do the rest. <laughs> Why aren't you doing anything? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Like almost like it's like a piece, a key to a puzzle or something instead of a living being. I felt like, yeah. but I thought that was pretty funny. I don't know. The... People had picked up on the fact that um, that the butterflies were like fluttering around, but then when the, the force was going up, mm-hmm. there was no more butterflies. Like, so I don't know if I mean obviously that could have scared the butterflies away, but it could also that those butterflies were something to do with the force. I don't really know though. I've never heard of any other thing in Star Wars where there was butterflies before, like, the Force came and did something. Yeah. But... I mean, well, I mean, Ahsoka has the, the bird that constantly follows her. Right. And um, Ezra, they'd say, with the loft cat, so... Yeah. I love the show, and I don't want to complain about too many things that happen in it. I just... At some point, don't you think that, you know, the timing of things could be different? Because I'm like, as soon as the child like runs out of energy and stops the force field that's exactly at the same exact time that moff gideon sends down the death troopers it's yeah. like mando tried to get him out of this protective bubble for the past 30 minutes during a large fight where he was entirely safe and as soon as the fight is lost that is when the energy runs out and that's when he's vulnerable it's like all too convenient timing. yeah yeah i think that was my yeah one of my big gripes with this episode is I'm just like, all right, I understand if that's what you want to do, then have him run out of energy way earlier. And then it just, the timing is too like point to point. I don't, mm. I don't know. I was more irritated with the fact that uh Mando left his jet pack and couldn't. Uh, <laughs> fly oh yeah, there. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've Get heard your jet pack. the, um, the theory of like in filmmaking is like coincidences can get people into trouble, Mm -hmm. but should never get people out of trouble. So I think I can forgive it as long as they make it a reasonable, you know, plausible, exciting way to get to resolve the situation in the end. 
you know, it, it's it's yeah. fine for now. <laughs> yeah. But I just want to know how much, a cop out how much differently does that scenario go if, you know, the Death Troopers land five seconds earlier and can't get through the child's force field? Like, does that give Mando enough time to get up there and rescue the child? I don't know. Possibly not. Maybe oh. one of them... Because uh, one of them one probably of them tries really to reach in and gets blown further. off the cliff by the force, like Mando you did. Three more. But... Uh, one of them to grab the child and two of them to hold off Mando. Yeah, I don't know. So I... Interesting. If they're anything think... like the pathetic HK droids, though, then who cares? Oh. I don't think so with that. They're obviously being... I, I feel like if they were created and, like, shown off in a end cut scene earlier in the season and that was how it went down i i think i think that would be pretty disappointing just like oh we got the dark troopers and and now they're just a pile of garbage on the floor <laughs> within mm. like the first 20 seconds of them appearing on screen doing stuff i feel like that will still happen to them anyway in the rest of the season when mando goes to rescue the child i we have two episodes well, so one just a random thought that popped into my head as you're talking about that and just what will happen to them anyway if Filoni is the student of, of George Lucas that we talk about it might be that um, there's something else now instead of the death troopers that will still get blown up because um, when it came to the B1 battle droids versus the B2 um, B1s came out in episode one and they were like the first level B2 battle droids came out in episode two. Right. And they were like a step up, like, mm -hmm. uh, an advancement. So we might see something beyond the dark troopers now as like the next threat, like the level up for the Mandalorian to have Maybe. to face. What if the HKs were, uh, the synonymous to the B1s and the, the dark troopers were, and also it's dark, not death troopers. Death troopers are living Did beings. Yeah, Chase did too. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember. Whatever, yeah. Dark do. The Dark Death Troopers. <laughs> so, so just to interject something, guys, um, one of our audience members, Brett, he said that Star Wars rollout show on YouTube, Kids YouTube has the blue butterflies. Apparently, it's a tie-in to Ben Solo somehow. I saw that article, I think. Um, the only... <laughs> My main issue with that is that entire... I forget what was it called. Like, what the title of that oh. thing with the the blue butterflies in it? Star Wars rollout kids rollout sh sh yeah. rollout show. It's I mean, it's very much so like an a, a preschooler kind uh, of thing. Whoa. So I don't my know issue, if they would reach that whoa. far. For my a issue with that <laughs> is that you know we're five years past the fall of the empire. If yeah, ben, ben has even be been born, he's door, a yeah. kid. He's like, could you imagine? Yeah. Like. Uh, He's older. He would be maybe just a little bit older than Kai. Could you imagine yeah. Kai going out to rescue the child? No, like. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'd be quicker to connect him to Anakin Skywalker than Ben Solo. Mm. So I, could it, it be it a might... connection to Leia? I'd rather yeah. have it be a connection to them, but yeah. I'd also just as much rather it be the fact that the Someone kid was did. hungry and wanted to eat them, so they put them there. I don't like. <laughs> Give him I, I more things see, to I, reach that's and what grab I at. Immediately upon seeing the uh, the butterfly, I was like, he's gonna grab he's the butterfly and put it in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. oh, we've seen him uh, eat insects before, so it wouldn't have put it past him. We've seen him eat worse. <laughs> yeah. So so let's go to um, the big one of the big reveals, anyways, of this episode was um, the slave one coming in. That was like such a cool like like one of yeah. those moments, like almost like. Uh, at the end of the previous episode when the Thrawn reveal, I was like involuntarily just like yelled out like the slave one. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. It was like, fun. So this was the first time I've actually used the Disney watch party thing. Um mm -hmm. our good friend Colton set it up and a bunch of us watched. And as soon as Slave One came on the screen, I my eyes shifted from here to to where all of us were up on the side on video and I was mm -hmm. looking and I was trying to see Ezra's reaction and he's just sitting there on his phone like this and I was like <laughs> what kind of psychopath but everybody else is like oh my gosh and Ezra had already seen it and he was just there to watch our reactions for all of the other stuff but still oh. I was just like 
in a world of COVID where you can't like go to your friend's house and watch this, the Disney watch party actually kind of helped so we could all still like watch it together. Um, yeah. So that was that was fun and getting to see everybody's reactions I, throughout everything. But I'm sure my reaction my during the slave one was priceless because I love that ship. I watched with my family and my dad freaked out when he saw it. Like <laughs> he, he like couldn't think of the name of the ship for a second. He's like, it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the best I've heard of. That's fantastic. Yeah. But no, I was super I was... I was happy to see it and I was disappointed to see it because it meant I was wrong and I don't like being wrong. But you know, I, I think you can, like you can at least take being wrong when you're it's <laughs> when it makes good story. It's at least beneficial mm. for you to be wrong, you know. It's, yeah. it's like I'd rather be wrong and enjoy what happens instead than be wrong and absolutely despise it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I, th yeah, I think being wrong about slave one there or boba fett not appearing mm -hmm. is a good thing <laughs> yeah because yeah. we were like no boba fett fennec shand is dead mm -hmm. and yeah and we don't even know like he definitely doesn't have the slave one anymore i think we were kind of like like yeah the slave one's probably gone yeah and we were wrong on like all those things <laughs> my question but... is why is mando's reaction so negative when he sees slave one he instantly I goes just knows something yeah someone but he instantly goes into defense line. mode so he brought the child to this rock on tython because ahsoka said yeah. when he sits on the rock he can call other jedis now another ship pops up and lands in the same area as you why does your mind instantly not switch to think oh the jedi have found him like why yeah. does he go I nuts think he's a bad thing because... so long as a bounty hunter yeah, I think. Yeah, but still, if if, he's, if it's because he knows of the slave one, then he should know that the person on the other side of the cockpit is. He didn't Boba know Fett. of the slave one because he exactly. didn't recognize Boba's armor. So yeah. why is I he think... instantly going into defense when it's very clearly not an imperial ship? It could be any other number of things. Mm. As far as the man, as far as Mando knows, I think in that case is the nearest Jedi at this point, is still probably Ahsoka. But he doesn't know that for sure. So, he doesn't know that for sure, but it's very unlikely that they were just passing by the Tython system, like, oh yeah, I think I'll just take a stop here, you know, uh, get get some fuel, like, uh, uh, just stay here for a bit. Oh wait, I'm getting a phone call from yeah. literally the planet right about, that'd be too much of a coincidence. I mean, hyperspace mm. moves pretty quick, I would think. That's true. So, but, yeah, but we still don't really have a good feel for we, how we still how don't. Quick. But no, I don't know. It just I I didn't understand the instant defense, and I also don't understand how Slave One found him. I don't. Yeah. That when was when did Boba too. get a chance to put a tracker on his ship? He says I've yeah. been tracking you since Tatooine, but well, that's kind of what he... you were saying earlier about timing, Chase. It yeah. didn't really make sense for him to show up now. Yeah. Um. I guess it doesn't really matter. The only yeah. thing I can think of is if he was just behind him by, by like questioning people, like where is like, and just following like every step where he had been, all the way into finding out like, oh he's going to Tython, and then, but you would think how, that he would be further he behind this? him. He would be. That was, that was my thought. Boba Fett was a bounty hunter. He did that for a living, so he probably had previous skill in tracking people. And knew Could they have a fob on the kid? At this point, a possibility. Maybe. Why would he have the kid's uh, chain code though? But he had he had been there on Tatooine. Mm -hmm. Clearly, he yeah. didn't need to be far behind him in questioning him. Yeah, he, he was he was right there. But Could why have did lost he, him on the ice why did, and... So, like, yeah, why did he? So say Mando goes back to Moss Eisley. Oh, there's the, wait, and... there's the answer right there. What Joe had just said, the ice planet. So oh. even if he's behind, he finds out where the frog lady's going from Pelimoto or his people, her people. Yeah, he can quick travel to there because he doesn't have the eggs. Yeah, so he can actually catch up 
faster because of the, the detour of the spider. Exactly. That's what I'm saying is why don't we see him on Trask? Why isn't this interaction happen on Trask? Because he can clearly make plot. it there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, seriously. I hate it. Like, why are you even questioning this? <laughs> That's I hate how it. TV works. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of TV. Even I know that's how TV works. Yeah, but I don't it's certainly like how the Mandalorian works. It's certainly, I don't know. It is everything, at He's least for the He's traveling at plot felt. speed. <laughs> <laughs> this baby will make no, 0.5 am. past plot speed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's, but, let's um, yep. continue on to Boba Fett, I guess, right? Yeah. So we, I think we got a better look at him in the light this time and it, i thought it was kind of cool and i know you, i guess people had mentioned this but the way his head looked like it was like melted a little bit like that's got to be from the sarlacc stomach yeah I'm like guessing. scarring that, that was yeah. pretty cool like that was neat um what did you guys think of his look i mean he looked nothing like Django, but i guess if you're a bit of sarlacc I, I definitely heard you know of, of course being the same actor i heard the voice yeah. i yeah. saw I, I could tell it was you know yeah, it I was, thought he looked uh, enough the, like Django. Different to make character sense. than Django, definitely. Yeah. I, I think I think they portrayed him well. Is what I'm trying to say, it was, especially think, the costume yeah. design. I loved the costume design. Of him. Yeah, and the way he wielded that Gaddafi stick, I was like, wow! Like I don't even want him to get his armor. He just needs yeah. that stick, and that's it. Uh, yeah, it you was, can tell he was on was... Tatooine for a long time because he had the Gaddafi stick. And the the long rifle that Tuscans use, so he's mm -hmm. clearly beaten up his fair share of Tuscan raiders. So not that this would matter at all to the story, but this is the what I want to believe is that in in Return of the Jedi, when they're fighting on that skiff, Han mm -hmm. Solo has a Gaddafi stick, and he says, "Boba Fett, where's Boba Fett?" And he turns around and he nails him with this the Gaddafi stick, and that's what sends him shooting off and landing into the. Do you, want, do you want your picture up, Josh? So I, you can if you want, but you don't have to, I guess. I'll put it up. But um, I want that to be the same to get Daffy stick. Like that fell into the Sarlacc pit, and that he reclaimed it, awful. and now he's using that so, as like his weapon. I don't know that it did because didn't he use that? Well, Gaddafi everything stick? did, right? But didn't he use that Gaddafi stick to pull Lando out of the pit? Yeah. Yes, he did. But no, I'm thinking that everything left behind, and... yeah, it could have eventually when it all blew up, fell and in. They and they could have left it on the speeder that they used to get out of there. Because likely, when he pulled Lando back on, that's the speeder that they would have rescued Luke and Leia with. Well, I want to believe the it's skiff. the same one. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a good theory. I will let you live I in your fantasy world. And that's why he's using it, and he's because maybe he used it to kill the Rancor, or not the Rancor, the Scar Sarlacc, whatever. Well, I think um, I think a crate dragon did that. <laughs> well, well, the, the no, the the stomachs sure were damaged. What's that? I said the stomachs were was already damaged, oh, right? The, the Sarlacc stomach. Right. Um. I th I I think it's pretty possible that it's the same Sarlacc. It doesn't have to be, but there's there's no real other mention of it. Mm. Um, I think it could be the same Gaffy stick. It's, it seems like everything's connected in yeah. this series, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Um, so, yeah. So then we get the reveal of Boba, but we also get the reveal of Fennec San. And I'm really glad. I like that character. Ming-Na Wen, I think, is a really cool actress, and she plays some awesome parts. I, I, so I'm glad we get more of her. I first saw Ming-Na Wen in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um and I loved her character in that. She's fun to watch. She plays those kind of gruff characters. Like, I, I love the attitude. I love the yeah. I I love how she plays those her characters. I think she gets typecast a little bit, but I don't think that's a bad thing. It's always fun to see her. She's always fun to watch. You know, it's interesting. I love her outfit. In this this the show. first time the first time I remember seeing her was ER. Do you guys remember the show ER? She was a character. She was a doctor on ER for like a few seasons, I think. Hmm. And that's the first time I ever remember seeing her. So that was like completely different role yeah. as to what, what, like what she is now. So, but I mean, yeah, I was looking at her credits and I was thinking 
a little bit that it's going to be kind of frustrating being an Asian American in the acting industry because like all her her characters were like Asian characters like you kind of get take typecast as like you've got to be like this like you know which is kind of be kind of a bummer like you want to probably broaden that and not have to be like oh you have to be this type of per- character for for it to fit but um I I think Fennec Shan is a really cool character I'm glad that we we're getting more um I was disappointed when she got killed in the same episode she was introduced. I know, but yeah, she and I'm didn't. glad she didn't. <laughs> she didn't get killed. Although, well, maybe I she, think that I also... mean, she was in rough shape, apparently, because yeah. her whole torso was like servos. Cyborgs yeah. now. But yeah, I think yeah. that I said during that episode that I think it was Boba who found her. Because that right, was back yeah. when I was still really hoping that we would get Boba Fett. But... Yeah, I'm pretty sure all of you thought it was Boba. Yeah. And it was Except actually it was because of the the jingling of the right yeah the, the like the spur like sound when he was walking. It was like the same exact sound that was in uh, Empire Strikes Back when he first walks on screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's this, the same spur sound effect is used. So a lot of people when they heard that they got thinking, that's who it was, and that's where that's where I jumped on to the whole Boba Fett boat. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, I like that it's confirmed now that that's who it was, mm-hmm. officially. Yeah. And I really like how they tied that in, too. Um, yeah. It's not just, like, a throwaway, like, oh, he's on the trail kind of thing. No. And it's... it makes me feel much better that there is a Boba Fett story arc, then, if they're going to connect all the bits and pieces together. Because... You have that bit, and then you connect him in episode one, where we see him at the end of the Crate Dragon episode, and now again, and they're kind of tying it all and making it a story arc on its own. So, I have a, I have a question then. What did you guys think of how he was portrayed? Like his his attitude, his goal, because it, it to me it felt like a big departure from how he was in. The original trilogy um you know he's a villain in the original trilogy but in this he's a good guy is he though yeah and i i wasn't i did not want him to be a bad guy and i was even surprised at how quickly he joined the mando to like join in on his quest so the issue i think when you're a mandalorian and you wear a baskar you have to realize you know how strong that makes you so if you're now a guy with just a robe and a Gaddafi stick, and you come against a Mando in full Beskar, that you know happens to have two sets of Beskar, I don't think Ooh. you're going to want to intentionally pick a fight with him. So I think the... While I didn't like that he wasn't just, alright, give me my army back or I blast you to bits, I liked that he was like, hey, let's be civil about this. You give me my armor, we go our separate ways. Mm. Yeah, I... 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 Did you say is he though, Chase? Because I, yeah, it sounds like you're not sure. Well, Joa said he was portrayed as a bad guy, and now he's portrayed as a good guy, and I don't think he's portrayed right. as a good guy. Okay, I because that's that's what I'm wondering. Because it seems like he's being portrayed as a good guy, and I have a argument why he is, but I want to hear what you have to because say. Because he's holding up his end of the deal. Is that why? It's he's an honorable man instead of. Ooh. I think that Mandalorians are an honorable people, though. So I don't think you can credit that, but what do you think, Kyle? So, because of uh, the, I don't want to call it pitiful, but the pitiful story arc, like the the pitiful, um, yeah, the development that they're doing with the Mando, that's going to be very easy to see. Um, where you did with with uh, Bo Bo Katan, where it's like, oh, you took off your helmet, you're not part of the creed. Oh, but she's still a good person, so maybe I can change my mind. I think to introduce Boba and have it work for this this story arc that they really want to push with the Mando, Boba Fett has to be honorable. He ha- you know, it's his armor, mm-hmm. um, and he has to be this good guy, so that way. Um, Mando can have a few examples to point to to be able to change his own mind. Mm. That makes sense. I guess I can see why they would write it that yeah. way. 
Um, I mean, yeah, so mm. um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking, of, like, if we're done with Boba, yeah. there was something else I wanted to talk about. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when the other ship comes down after the slave one, they're kind of like having this back and forth, and they're going to settle it civilly. Mm-hmm. Then this other ship comes down. Did you instantly know it was a troop transport? For some oh, reason, I didn't know. I was like, is that the Jedi already showing up? It was no, like it was I was too, looked... way too angular. Yeah. It looked like the ones in. Um, it looked like the ones in Force Rise Awakens Skywalker. now, right? It looked yeah. Like the Rise of Skywalker, I think. Mm. Um, very similar design. Oh, I, think. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From I the guess, first order. I guess Force Awakens too. There's like in the beginning when order. Kylo comes down and he confronts Lor Santeca. Like when I thought back, I was like, okay, I think those are the ones from like the First Order. So, which is making me think, like, is this starting to shift over to First Order tech? Which I, think, I thought was, okay, that's kind of cool. I think they definitely have, by sh- showing shiny white stormtroopers and the death troopers, not death troopers, dark troopers, sorry, Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, they're definitely showing that the Empire itself has gone underground, but hasn't gone away. And they're just trying to rebuild in the background, but they're still fully staffed, fully supported with lots of material wealth which i find odd like i get that they're rallying around previous you know big ticket figures like Mm -hmm. grand moff gideon um i find it weird that they still have kind of structure to them that they're Mm -hmm. able to rebuild like this yeah which I, so, I don't I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I just think it's very no, I I just that you're you saying that just connected it for me, Joa. Why else would Ahsoka be looking for Thrawn? The Empire needs leadership. Who do you think is currently leading them aside from a brilliant strategist? So Thrawn is back. He's the one that's been reorganizing because they talked about in season one that, you know, the Empire is kind of spread up into still like cults. And now you're starting to see them get more and more structured instead of just the stray Imperial warlords. So yeah, Thrawn, Thrawn is... Who's doing it. Hmm? But they're, they're restructuring under Gallus Rax, according to the Aftermath books. Gallus Rax? Mm. Who? Gallus Rax. He, Gallus, Gallus Gaius Rax. He's the guy who's kind of Gaius? restructuring the Empire, um, building building a fleet that's going to culminate in the Battle of Jakku. Oh. Hmm. Well, I, I think still this could be like two separate groups. Factions. Of, two separate factions, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. So Thrawn is still trying is... to rebuild the Empire while Gallus Rax is trying to build the First Order. Because mm. my thought is Thrawn, like his original, the Timothy Zahn trilogy, um, Last Command, um, that was his role. He was the final leader of the Empire, mm-hmm. right? So I, I I like that. If that's what they're going for here, I really love that tie-in. So there was so, a Thrawn trilogy, right? Did anyone read the I, whole thing? No. Nope. Yeah. So where does it end in the timeline? Is it um, before Rebels or after Rebels? After Rebels. This, this was like before Rebels even like this started. <clears throat> This was okay. after Return of the Jedi, like after the fall of the Empire. Thrawn was the last Grand Admiral left of the Empire, mm-hmm. and he was rallying the rest, you know, the the fragmented Empire together. And that one is a canon story. Yeah. It's not Legends. It's, yeah, it's Legends. It's Legends. Oh, oh, you're talking about the old Thrawn yep. trilogy because they have a new Thrawn trilogy now. The right? new Thrawn trilogy, as far as I know, is before. Before Rebels. Okay. T- right. Timothy, Zahn kind of was, Timothy Zahn was um, hired by Disney, I think, to make the new Thrawn books. So that's right. probably that's I probably look... what's confusing us here. So I read that. the I read the first of the the new trilogy of the Thrawn trilogy. I haven't read the new trilogy yet. So the, the want... first one was really good, but really? I was worried. Like, where is it going? Because I've also read the Afternath series, and I'm starting to get worried that like. They could be contradicting themselves because of the aftermath series. There was no mention of Thrawn at all, 
And now all of a sudden we're getting told in the same time period that Thrawn is still exists. And I'm like, I'm How are thinking, they going to do that. I'm thinking the reason is because two separate factions. Uh, that's my theory here is that there are mm. two separate entities so, calling themselves the Empire. So I, I, I would be kind of surprised to see how much um, Thrawn is tied to this new M Empire because it just seems like they have a really solid storyline and they're pulling aspects that were introduced um, in the Aftermath series like Cobb Vanth. Mm -hmm. Um and they really kind they really kind of button it up because what 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 what's happening is the it, and this is just a, a brief overview of the aftermath series is Emperor Palpatine. Um, bef I don't think they think he's still around. I can't remember, but he had set up these secret bases to dis um, to discover or to research investigate the um, the outer reaches of space the dark reaches i forget what it's called um wild space and wild the space. unknown regions yeah the unknown regions so yeah. yeah exactly so 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 gallus rax is the one that kind of had had gathered the empire together hung on to all of the old star destroyers had like um had tabs on all of them there was holdover from um uh the the previous books the books that were written about the start of the empire with um I'm going to forget her name, Sloan, uh, mm -hmm. Ray Sloan. Like, it seems like they have a really structured and fluid timeline about what's going on there. So I, I, I'm thinking anything that has to do with Thrawn and the Ahsoka series is going to be more or less on, on its own. Um, except that... Um, I can't even think. Except that... I guess he would have a tie, a tie to Moff Gideon, but it really seems like they have the whole storyline about what happens to the Empire afterwards pretty well buttoned up mm -hmm. in the timeline that we're going to. Yeah, I think you're, that's what you're, you're right. There could still be room for some story, but I don't think that they can do anything too big because then you'd go, well, why wasn't it mentioned in the Aftermath series? You know? So. It's true. It's kind of like it's. A, I'm curious. I need to read Aftermath still. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really good. I liked it. <clears throat> I mean, I still want I to talk about to the fact then that the child is still its own loose end, because if yeah, I, that's true. something has to happen to it because it's not there by the time we get to the first order. Mm. You you can already see seeds of what its end is going to be, right? That this cloning process. Yeah. All, all the um I just don't know that Disney can kill it because it makes so many people mad. That's that's <laughs> like, where I'm like where I'm, I'm thinking as a Star Wars fan, as a to... fan of the Mandalorian show, I'm fine with characters dying. I'm gonna be super mad in the Ahsoka series when they kill off Ahsoka, but it has to happen. Ahsoka is not yeah. an infinite being, she doesn't live forever. We already know that by the time of Rise of Skywalker she's dead. She's probably even dead before Force Awakens. We don't know for sure. So something has to happen to her. You know, so if they kill something her, has if to they happen to the child. Grogu off soon enough. People are still angry at him about eating the egg, so it might be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if they forget next season, then oh no! I don't. I don't know how quickly people forget Baby Yoda eating things. <laughs> But let's let's move along with um, the story here. Move along. One with of the things the tragedy. I picked up, the tragedy. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I picked up watching it the second time through is Boba Fett gets in the Slave One and he's flying straight up. This is towards the end after the Dark Troopers already grabbed Grogu and they're going up, and they tell him the break off pursuit and he says, "I'm going to do a light follow," and he's following him up and he sees the Star Destroyer up there and he's like, "The Empire is back." Yeah. And he is like shocked. And he goes and says something I did not catch the first time. He goes, this isn't a spice-induced dream. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Boba Fett has drug addiction issues. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I... This, so here's the thing with that. Um, you you heard the... I'm, heard, I'm sure you heard the phrase pipe dream. Yeah. that They're parodying that. You know, pe people say the term mm -hmm. pipe dream all the time. Right, yeah. You know, spice dream yeah. is just... It's It's... 
the Star Wars universe's version of yeah. That. But I just thought it was funny. But I, I did, I, I did funny. appreciate his uh, his like being shocked that the Empire is back and like. Like he worked for the Empire, so he what yeah. he didn't even sound happy about it. He sounded like he was like, "Uh oh, the Empire's back." And yeah. you could think if he worked for him, and that's where his bread and butter, he'd be like, "Yeah, they're back," but he didn't seem like that at all. Yeah, I think it's because he knew that the Empire is you know up to no good, because he had a he was hired by Vader specifically very often. Yeah. Um, and so. I think the reason he worked for the Empire, though, was basically just it's a means to an end. So is you that know, something that he's a simple man making his way through the universe? Completely mm -hmm. unrelated. Are we going to talk about the fact, though, that Vader likely hired Boba Fett because he reminded him of Rex? Mm. I, I do was going to mention that everybody else did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like I love that, that theory. theory. Yeah. I mean, it's a completely retcon theory, but I love it. Like. I'll take that it. That was not an idea initially, but I like it. Yeah. yeah. It is like pretty it. funny. Yeah. I, I think I'll, that's I'll that's accurate, though. Yeah. I just... My entire thinking here with, like, the whole... How they're directing Boba Fett in what seems to be the rest of this season is it's a far cry from what we see of him in the Clone Wars series and mm. the original trilogy. You know, he's much more menacing and angry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, in this series, he seems to be a pretty nice guy. Yeah. Or yeah, at least agree. at least a decently honest person. He's he's honorable. Series. I think honorable. that's that's never been the question because after so I mean it's we kind of skipped over the real the reason this episode was named the tragedy is my beloved Razor Crest. He's no more. After everything they've subjected it to, it doesn't <laughs> fly another day. But no, the Mando was kind of expecting to just be like stranded on this planet now, and Boba and Fennec Shan to take off. And he's like, "No, I I gave you my word that we would help you keep the child safe. The child's not safe right now. You know, hop in, kind of thing." So like, mm. it's definitely showing honor. But I. I don't know. I, I love that um, he found though that little piece for for Grogu. For yeah. Grogu. So, yeah, that was like, nice. That, that was yeah, that was a cool heartrending. Cool. Colton yeah. actually brought this up, so I'll bring something that Colton said when we were watching this to um, the floor. Is it's Beskar? It survived the crash, be. and it's still <laughs> that shiny. And yeah. um, him and his girlfriend were saying the reason that the child probably likes to keep that is if it's made out of Beskar and it's that shiny, it probably reminds him of Mando. And so he wants a piece of Mando to keep with him, which is why he always is, like, reaching for it. Yeah. That's adorable. Oh, that so is pretty cute. Someone put on Reddit um, this artwork that they did of, like, Grogu grown up, and he's, like, a Jedi master now, and he's old, like, Yoda's age, and he's talking to, like, other young Jedi and he's all the stuff he's saying is like wicked touching, like my father talking about his father and stuff mm -hmm. and how much he loved him and how just because he loved him, it doesn't mean he fe feared losing him. And it was just it's really well written thing. And he's like holding he's like making the, the little ball thing float like he still has it after all these years. <laughs> he still held on to it and like as, as his trinket. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was neat. I wish I would have uh, saved it. I would have put yeah. it up, but I didn't. So I will say, um, as far as the title, the tragedy, trying to just trying to just guess what it was. I think she's saying good night. Sorry, good night. Right. Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. She looks so confused. No. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Uh, Sorry. So, anyways, oh. so so just thinking about the title, the tragedy, when Boba Fett was going up. I mean, I knew it was a Star Destroyer, so I was thinking, well, I mean, it seems like the fans have gotten everything they wanted. What if, like, he just gets blasted Whoa. out of the sky, <laughs> and that's a tragedy? No, oh, what, oh. once the Razor Crest blew, I'm like, they're going to need to get out on that, that ship, because there's nothing left. I mean, there's uh, other I... civilization on Tython, maybe just not right there, because at least yeah. in the Old Republic, there's the, the village of Twi'lek Pilgrims. 
Oh yeah. So there right. is yeah. at least other civilization on Tython. But yeah. so my I I'm I'm very sad back to like the Razor Crest. I'm very sad that oh that chip is gone now. <sighs> Oh, it hurts. Yeah. It like hurts I'm sure, so much. I'm sure they're going to replace it in um, the next season. But at the same time, like I've been wanting to get know? for the past couple of weeks, I've been wanting to get the Lego, the Lego Razor yeah. Crest. And well, I'm now like, you can just reenact it by dropping it, it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, get a little Too cherry soon. bomb and build around it, and then light it, and boom. There you go. Oh, yeah, I no, just I'm... how how do you replace the Razor Crest though? Because this is a it's a pre Imperial ship, which is why it's not oh, no. in registries. Yeah, it's so, gonna be hard to replace. Yeah, unless I don't think it's gonna unless be like they another... plan on passing on the Slave One, Boba's like, all right, I'm retired. Here's the keys. But come on, would you like? I doubt that. that. Would you actually like that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think, think I would so. Like that. I love Slave One, but I don't think you really so. think he's gonna retire and hand over the keys. Like, how do you honestly think he's gonna get that? Ship? I think he's getting his own his own right, standalone. Fair. He's gonna need that ship. Uh, no. So, <laughs> I, but well, let's talk about where we're going because uh, we've we've pretty much talked a good amount about the tragedy. Um, so let's talk about what, what's gonna happen in episode seven or f chapter fifteen. I looked ahead, and uh, it's going to be directed by Rick Famuia, I think is how you say it, who he directed one of the episodes, or at least one of the episodes of the first season. Do you remember which one? So, I do not. Oh, I want to do say it might have been the break. prison. It might have been the prison break ship. We're going to have to do that sense. again, because we have to get back. Mayfeld. Yeah. I, I think that's going to be glossed over. Just yeah, like I hope right. in the first but I minutes. think he's gonna call in a bunch of favors and like have a pretty awesome crew. And he's already called in one with uh, Kara. Kara Dune. I think Snap. he's gonna get Grief Karga. He's got Boba and Fennec Shand. He's gonna get Mayfeld. Bo-Katan's um, probably gonna show up. Bo-Katan, I think, is gonna come. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's gonna be yeah. a pretty cool last two episodes. So you think this is like just, they gotta be like, like an hour piece. This, this one's gonna be the crew building, and then the last episode of the season is the attack on the Empire. I think it's going to be the crew building, in partial part of it, but I don't think yeah. it's gonna be the whole episode. It's just crew building. I, I would be surprised. I, I think it'll be a montage. I think it'll be synchronously put into a crew building montage, like. <laughs> Hey, come aboard the Slave One, Ahsoka. <laughs> I don't. I think, Ahsoka, I think Ahsoka. Yeah, I think Ahsoka's right. probably right done. Now the child gone. Ahsoka's probably done for the the series because she's. I, that's my guess too. She's I off just trying to find. Want to throw a name out? I'm gonna. Oh, okay. throw back. It's to gonna some... be a Jedi, though, right? I mean, come on. Uh, oh, she'll be back. I don't. Do you think we're getting a Jedi this season? Yes. Yes, I, I thought do. so. I thought I think... we were. I, I thought think... we were going to get it in that season. Like, at, towards the end of the episode, I was thinking someone's going to show up and it's going to be like, you you missed it. Yeah. And so then... my guess, my personal guess, is that we're going to see the Jedi in the season finale. Yeah, I think if anything, it'd be season finale. Probably if, not if next anything, episode. If anything, season finale. My main question is, who do you think it's going to be? I still think it's Cal Kestis. I, I know who I want it to be. I want it to be Luke Skywalker, yeah. played by Sebastian yeah. Stan. Yeah. But... I've heard some people say Mace Windu. Oh. Can you imagine? What? Can you that imagine? Would awesome. <laughs> Luke would lose. I mean, Kyle would lose his mind. He would just be like, I'm done with Star Wars. I, I don't think Are I you want kidding? that. That's the one guy that I want to come back. <laughs> it is? Yes. You say, you say that you hate when they bring people back. I hate like... when they bring people back that I'm not excited for. <laughs> like Palpatine and Maul, but I, they haven't. They have not overdone bringing Mace Windu back. I, I would. I would not. I mean, would I be upset? No, but I would. He wouldn't uh, be my would, first I choice. Love, I would love to see Samuel L. Jackson rep reprise his role oh, though as Mace Windu. That'd be. If that'd it happens, be something. I would love it. That would be something. Be I, don't, something. I don't know how it would I, work, but it would be really cool if it was Leia. But I don't know yeah, how it would work. I, I don't think it would be just because she was never a Jedi. She did yeah. some training with Luke, but she was never a Jedi. I think she it's... hung it up. But we don't know when she hung it up. 
Right. Yeah. True. It's it's true. And they have I, done stuff with her, like face recreation stuff, and yep, already for Rogue One and for um, mm-hmm. the La- Rise I of Skywalker. So I'm like, could they do it for this and have it be her? I mean, I loved Fallen Order. That, that was such good. a fun game. But at the oh. end, it just it kind of led the way for like this isn't the end of Cal Kestis's story. So I think to kind of mm. bring him to the live action like on that quest that you you know you left the game with i think that'd i worry be cool. that it will be too he'll be too obscure of a jedi but here's the thing the is i don't me, like, i that's that's what i don't think you need i don't think you need to bring in somebody recognizable i think it could be a cool nod to those who have played the games but i feel like if you keep throwing all these other characters you know like just to keep the mainstream fans happy I don't think it means as much. I think you can bring in and introduce another Jedi that, you know, we have background for, and then if people want to go and find out the story, they can go back and play the game. But I don't think... Yeah. yeah. All those Baby Yoda fans complaining about, oh, I don't want to have to do Star Wars homework. I don't want to have to watch Clone Wars or Rebels. I don't want to have to... I I think you can introduce... (laughs) I think you can introduce a new Jedi in such a way where, you know, it builds the story for them. Sort of like, you know, you don't if you only want to know the story of Luke Skywalker, sure, just start at episode four. Episodes one through three are pointless for you. Like mm. I think you can do that with a Cal Kestis. I think it's harder to do with an Ezra Bridger just because of his ties to Ahsoka, Sabine, uh, and therefore like Bo Katan, whatever. But I think because Cal is kind of this outside perspective who is on this quest for force sensitive kids, I think you can introduce him in a much easier way that's just a cool nod for fans who have played the game but it's not overdoing it for people who don't want to do their homework i would be happy with cal kestis i i have i played the game i'm completely i just know that there'll be people if they it is it'll be like now who is this like but wait he's not even Ahsoka. he's not even in a, a tv show he's in a video game that i have to play now like yeah. i just feel like i don't think it I matters know. man I think of all characters in like that we know of in Star Wars the, the who could be plausible. I think Cal Kestis makes the most sense. I and think, I think so. Cal in Kestis is who I would be happiest with. Unless yeah. it's Mace Windu by some yeah. long shot pipe dream <laughs> or spice dream. <laughs> uh, that 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 would be ridiculous. It would, it be. would be hilarious though. It would be hilarious. Want, it would be I ridiculous. His, I want his first line. Where is my super suit? <laughs> uh, honestly, like, though, fall- he he got electrocuted and fell out a window. Yes. Yeah, and he got his arms cut off. Right, one. And he I don't off, think or, an, an, an arm. He got lost one arm. An arm. A hand. Arm. It wasn't even an arm. I really don't think it's him. I, I know don't. Star Wars theory wants to make that a thing. It's just not. <laughs> It's not, but it, it's probably not a thing. It, what I, I do it's think, fun to speculate. What I do think is that you can look at popular theories, and guess who it's gonna be, because it really, 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 really seems like the fans ha- either have a really good beat on it, or um, the show creators are just throwing in whatever they think the fans really want. So I, yeah. I honestly think you're if you look at like who people think the jedi is going to be it's either going to be luke ezra or cal Kestis. it's going yeah. to be one of those things. i think i'll be most disappointed if it is just some other random force sensitive being or maybe somebody that luke's training i think that will be the least satisfying thing for me let me ask you actually that's a this, that's a good good test for this right because fans want it to be this this connected mm-hmm. thing um chase and, and josh i don't think i know about Joa, but how did you actually feel about it being Grogu and not Yoda, the child well, being Grogu and not Yoda? I still have. Hope. I did. I, I never I was well. one that loved the the it was Yoda theory. I love that theory, and I still hold that hope. It's just the the issue that Grogu was trained at the temple r- kind of ruins it. That's the biggest issue with that theory. Okay, so now. you were disappointed. Joa was disappointed. Josh, I, I guess I thought you were disappointed, but no, I wasn't disappointed. Not disappointed. You were not. I was you're, not. You're I, just still hoping your theory's right? I'm still hoping my theory's right, but in all honesty, in all honesty, it's fine by me. 
I'm fine okay. with I'm fine with either outcome here. I'm just still holding out hope like Chase. <laughs> yeah. My theory is it's correct. Just, it's increasingly less likely. Like, Ahsoka probably would oh, have felt... Is. Everybody has, like, a unique Force signature. They can, like, oh, I know it's him. I haven't felt my Master's presence since. Like, <laughs> I think she would know that it is Yoda. That's true. And that encounter would have gone much differently. But... But this is yeah. Yoda from, like... How, seven... Eight hundred years ago. But still, ago. I don't know. Don't think it's the same person, really. Yeah, I don't think it's you the know, same. Ten years changes a person. I think. Eh. Either way, you never know. It's I. It's super unlikely, but it is super unlikely. That's still I the don't best theory. <laughs> so I'm going to attempt to get us back on track. We're talking about. Oh, I think Kyle was going down a train of thought with that 15. questioning, though. Did, oh, were you, Kyle? Do you have a tra train of thought you're going down? If he had, I don't. I don't remember. I. I guess it was just like. Uh, it seemed like people were really upset when you deviated from it not being someone that's connected, right? Like, oh, it's Grogu. It's not actually Yoda. Disappointing. Like, oh, I, really disappointed. I think no. if it was a Jedi that you didn't recognize rather than one of these three that you're already pushing for and have a lot of theories about, it seems like it would be less well received. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if the Jedi that shows up is someone brand new that we've never even met before? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I would think that would be unlikely, but I mean, I guess it's possible. Yeah, I don't know. Would it be disappointing? I'd say it would be a, a, a little bit of a disappointment that it wasn't a Jedi. Even though that's funny that we're saying that because one of the things we're, we're excited about is them being able to tell a new story. <laughs> but um, it would just be like, where has that guy been? Because yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but, that that's the camp I think I'd be in. Is like, oh well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or it's like I was kind of hoping for something a little more. Like they could have used you, know. you during uh, Return of the Jedi, but I guess yeah. that's the same thing with like Cal Kestis and his crew. Like, could have used you. It's like to stop the Empire. <laughs> have, yeah. we, have we? Have we talked? To, sorry, you know what, Josh? You were trying to get us back on track. <laughs> I was just. I was looking that we're almost at an hour of live stream and was thinking we probably wanted to wrap soon i pulled up rick um fami fami i'm probably saying that really the, the director and he did for season one he did chapter two which was the child that was the episode it was called mm -hmm. that was with the mudhorn and the jawas mm -hmm. and he also did chapter six which was the prisoner when they go and rescue the, the yeah, twi'lek from the okay. prison ship so could it be just collecting, collecting his crew for this battle, this last final battle? That's going to be like in the final. I feel like it'd be hard because I feel like they have to ramp up somehow. So I feel like this will probably be like another forty-minute episode into a one-hour mm. finale, and I yeah. think that you yeah. have a hard time stretching out a crew building over forty minutes. I'm I'm a little, little in an worried interesting about where way, this could but... go. My, I'm worried about thought... where this could go. My Why are you worried? I think that the Mandalorian could die in one of these episodes. There, we have a season three. I know. I so know. You, you can't. Maybe, oh, sorry. Grogu is the new Mandalorian. No. <laughs> or Bo He's part of the Creed. Or we'd follow Bo Katan I, or someone else, whoever gets the. I made. don't. I, I just. I don't know. I don't think Ezra would be upset with a Katie Sackoff series as Bo Katan. <laughs> I he, just feel like. Yeah. The Mandalorian I, could give his life to save the child. There's not a chance. Somebody else. There might be a fake out at best. There might be a fake out. But Somebody else will probably will probably lose some other character. Maybe we lose, yeah. um, Gina Carano's character, or Grief Karga. Um, what if Cara what Dune if or Grief Karga? Maybe. I really want to know where where that Maybe series that. would go, Josh. In your mind, I'm yeah. I'm really interested now. I don't think they're getting rid of. The Mando. I don't, I don't think I they think, can kill off the titular character. Well, there was rumors that he was quitting the show at the end of the, them filming the first, the second season. So I was like, could they have those rumors stem but from the fact that they're killing him off? They shows they don't need him. I think it's easy enough to find somebody who sounds close enough. You never see his face, so who cares? You, he's, I don't know. I guess, yeah. I was just going along with that, like, yeah. 
if there's there was all these theories that he had quit the show and that he was done. And it's like, well, could that all be just throwing shade because he's actually his character's gone? Like Or because Boba Fett is actually the Mandalorian. I don't know. Or they're gonna try to say the child's the Mandalorian now. The he's child the is not the Mandalorian. No. The child is being returned the entire reason that the uh the armorer sent him on that quest was to return him to the Jedi. She didn't intend on that child being raised as a foundling. Otherwise, she would have just said, oh, this child is yours now, not just in your care. He's yours. Where is the armor? Is the armor dead? No. Nope. No. I think the armor is alive. Uh, maybe we're forgetting about them as part of the crew. Well, maybe. Yeah. I think. Oh, um, that'd be interesting because she's like, com compared to the other Mandalorian, she's like the cult master. Mm hmm. So that'd be really interesting. Yeah, we I haven't think, seen them. And I, I miss we'll them. See, we'll see her again. I'm guessing we'll see the armor again. Um, I know that... What, what's... Um, Cara Dune. That's the character's name. Mm -hmm. um, Cara Dune as, like, the sheriff of... Um, yeah. What's the planet called? Navarro. Whatever it is. Navarro, Marshall. thank Marshall. you. Marshall. Marshall, yes, thank you. As the Marshal of Navarro, she was down, like, trying to fend off the... <laughs> The bandits basically in the the sewer system um and the armor wasn't there she collected all the best car all the all the leftover armor and left probably that's yeah. that's my guess is that she's hmm. gone from there yeah. she found a so new place to, I, to hide i wonder that if when mando if mando goes to look for her to you know add her to the crew if he's going to end up leading an attack squadron of mandalorians and kind of reigniting a mandalorian empire war have bo katan bring her clan have the mando bring his creed boba fett is kind of a one-man army in this scenario with fennec Shan, who isn't even a mandalorian but kind of doing like a three-pronged attack on the empire i don't know that'd be pretty cool <laughs> i'd like that turn it instead of just into like a, a one-man mission into like a full-scale battle yes instead of captain america the first avenger we're getting avengers endgame <laughs> straight up so i i I've actually read an interesting theory about where they could be going on how everyone now knows him in that armor when he shows up they're not surprised who he is they're like they can recognize him and they were saying they were how they're trending and he's seeing now that more mandalorians will not wear their helmets and Mm -hmm. that he was maybe in a group that was a little bit more strict in there. And what level is he willing to go to try to get his kid back? Is he willing to go undercover almost like take it off the suit so that he's not as recognizable? And could that be the way they go into him actually removing his helmet in the series? No, I, I, think, I, think I think, I think it's Josh easier to get right here. I was gonna say, I think Sorry. it's easier to get him to take the helmet off than the armor because the armor is such a huge protective layer and I don't think he cares about being known. I don't think this is an undercover op for him. The Empire knows that he's going to be coming. And and he knows he's going after the Empire. So why give away your one distinct advantage, which is the Beskar? I'm, I'm sure, though, at this point, Josh is right, that if, any, if anything were to get Mando to take his helmet mm -hmm. off, it would be for the child's safety. Mm-hmm. You know, I it, think it's it, it, it could lead up to a child. season three where he doesn't have to wear his helmet every episode. I think Which that's I think that's, that's more than likely. I think they're off. definitely coming there, but I think that if he goes back to the like shrimp colony, he'll take his helmet off to begin a relationship with that widow. Hmm. But I think that's I don't think he's taking the helmet off for like any other reason. Like I I, I don't know. Because he's not willing Unless to give up the best guard, why would he market. have to? Why would he have to take off the helmet to protect the kid? Like, oh man, don't give us your helmet he and we won't to, kill it. He's not going to do that. Disguise who he is. So I don't, let me ask you. Disguise who he is in some way. He would know. have to take I, off the armor. I can't. Let me ask you. The sky. Go ahead, Kyle. Sorry, no, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I was, I was literally like, I wanted you to finish your thought. Um. I just wanted to ask you a question, Josh. Like, what do you think will be the climax of the final episode? Like, what 
is going to be the final confrontation of this season? I don't know. It's... I want to say it's going to be between Moff Gideon and everyone else, but this Thrawn I, I name think... keeps sticking in my head, and I don't know where he's going to come in. I, I, I see it as a final 1v1. I think that it's Mando versus Moff Gideon, one-on-one, Darksaber versus Beskar Spear. Oh, did I just lose internet? I might have just lost internet. Uh, technical difficulties, just give us a minute. Right. Well, it looks like uh, technical difficulties are not getting resolved, so um, thank you all for watching the stream. Sorry about the lack of an ending. Uh, if you do enjoy anything from Geek Sutter, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, we'll catch you guys in the next stream. And your clones are very impressive. You should be very proud.